It's talked about in boardrooms in the most successful companies, how business results are linked to employee engagement driven by inspiring leadership. So let's talk leadership. I'm Bill Hogg, and in this series, I talk in depth with corporate leaders about the tools and techniques they are using to build a high performing business in today's economy. With me today is John Cardella, Executive Vice President and Chief People Officer for Ceridian Canada. He's been with Ceridian for nine years. But before we begin our discussion, let's get an overview of the company. Ceridian Canada is a human resources solutions provider that helps clients optimize their workforce, reduce costs, and save time by finding, paying, deploying, developing, and engaging their talent. With 40 years of experience, proven expertise, and recognized service excellence, Ceridian is a trusted partner to 40,000 Canadian customers. Ceridian Canada is part of Ceridian Corporation, a global business service company with 8,700 employees and 1.6 billion U.S. dollars in annual revenue worldwide. Ceridian provides services to 130,000 customers, touching the lives of 25 million employees, recognized repeatedly for HR and workplace best practices. For more information, visit ceridian.ca. As Executive Vice President and Chief People Officer for Ceridian, John leads the company's HR strategies and is responsible for nurturing and growing the company's reputation as one of the best companies to work for in Canada. Over the years, Ceridian has garnered several prestigious awards, including, including 30, 30 Best Workplaces in Canada, Canada's 10 Most Admired Corporate Cultures, and the 50 Most Engaged Workplaces. Welcome from Ceridian Canada, John Cardella. It's nice to have you with us today, John. Thank you very much, Bill. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. So my first question is, when you think of a high-performing workplace, and this is clearly something that's important to you and Ceridian, right. what are the kinds of things that come to mind in terms of what is a high-performing workplace? Well, clearly there are two elements that stand out for me when you're talking about a high-performance workplaces. You're talking really about, one, leadership, and secondly, you're talking about the workforce. So when you're talking about leadership, and it really is uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, quite probably the most important element to have uh, leadership, to be able to set the tone, set the direction for the company, uh, set up the environment so that people feel uh, comfortable and productive in what they're doing and, and are able to take risks. And so leadership really enables the workforce to, to really uh, do what it needs to do to produce or deliver whatever the company needs in order to be successful. So to me, uh, being able to, uh, to have the both is really uh, the holy grail in terms of making a company truly go. But it starts with leadership, as you say, and that starts with what the, the team at the top is like. So tell me a little bit about how your organization ensures that the leadership is fully aligned, that they have the same direction they want to go in, and then how right. that starts to translate to the organization. Right. Again, it is leadership, and it's, uh, it's the executive team. Uh, we've got to, for sure, we've got to walk the talk. But the executive team also needs someone at the top to set that tempo and to give us license to essentially do what we need to do. So at Ceridian, uh, particularly Ceridian in Canada, we've been very, very fortunate uh, in as much as, uh, like I myself, I've had two uh, amazing uh, leaders uh, over the tenure, over the course of my employment with Ceridian. And, uh, and working with, uh, with our current uh, boss, uh, Dave McKay, uh, he's just amazing. I mean, he, he, he really understands that uh, you, first of all, you hire talent to, uh, to do what they need to do. And so his, uh, uh, his key strength is to really uh, enable uh, uh, his leaders to, uh, to really uh, get the job done. So, so we have the wherewithal to do what we need to do to essentially uh, carry out our responsibilities in, uh, in the way that uh, makes most sense, uh, but also very much in keeping with the values and the mission that we've set up for the company. So I think you've highlighted an important point. It's all well and good to hire great people and let them do their thing, right. but we've got to figure out what the thing is that we need to do. So that comes back to the vision and values. So tell me a little Precision. bit about where you guys are with your vision and values. What, what are they? What do they stand for? And I understand that you recently went through a process of refreshing them. So please tell me about that. 
Yeah, we went through a process of uh, uh, refreshing our, our values and, and our mission. We did have our values in place uh, over the years for 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 quite a number of uh, of years, and and, and with uh, with new employees, with new leadership, with the fact that the company has evolved and changed over the years. Right. You know, it was time to really refresh those values, and uh, you know, we could have simply have done what most organizations do. You know, get uh, get the exec team together and and redo them, and then communicate them all to. To, uh, to the staff, but, uh, but we chose to do something different and very interesting this time around. And that was to, to really you know, leverage uh, social media platforms mm -hmm. to basically connect with our people and to ask our people uh, what they felt uh, our values in this company ought to be. For them to articulate the type of values that we hold that will really reflect well in our organization. And so we, we had well over 200, 300 uh, separate instances of input from our employees from, from around the world, I might add. And uh, we used much of that feedback to guide our process forward. And so essentially our, our, our mission and values have been very much shaped by, uh, by our people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what was really neat about what we did, the way that we introduced those the mission and values once they were completed, was that uh, we really embarked on, uh, on, uh, on a process of, uh, of, again, talking to our employees and, uh, and, and, and having them basically talk to us about what, what the values mean to them. And as they were doing so, we basically made this collage of video that, uh, that we then uh, pull all together. And when we launched the new mission and values, it was really all about them. Right. And it was just amazing the way that that resonated throughout our company. Well, and, and the interesting thing about values is, um, you know, I, I hear some people use terms like, well, we have aspirational values. Right. And I'm not really bought, I'm not sold on that concept, to be quite frank with you. I think values need to be reflective of reality, and right. they need to be reflective of our best day. But to say, well, you know what, we think collaboration is <clears throat> important, therefore let's call one of our values collaboration and there's no collaboration in the organization, it's, it's kind of a wasted exercise. Correct. So what I really like about what you said is that um, it was led by the leadership for yeah. sure. I mean, you guys initiated it, but it was led by the leadership and informed by the organization. So they really did reflect the organization's values as opposed to something that was just kind of created out of thin air. Exactly. And so when we basically launched our values, you know, our workforce didn't, didn't go like, what? You know, yeah. what's that? You know, that's not us. Because, uh, because the values that we do have, I mean, I, I can even remember them and, you know, name them off, right? It's, it's integrity. It's customer driven. It's, it's high performing people. It's accountability. And it's about teamwork. So those five key values really resonate with our people because it is, it is who we are. Yeah. And so, um, and we do much more than just, uh, basically uh, stick them up on the wall. I mean, our values are what we, uh, as you say, what we do to basically guide our our day-to-day -day decisions. Well, the other thing, you know? I just before we move on to the decision-making yeah. process, because I think values do really inform the decision-making process, I want to just talk a little bit about how they were rolled out. And one of the things that, that, um, that I really enjoy when I work with my clients is, is getting that input because I love the opportunity when a leader is able to get up in front of their, their teams and say, I heard what you said and based on what I heard, here's right. what we believe right. is, is our values in this particular example. Right. Because when that happens, then the audience they may not have gotten it, ex may not be in complete agreement with every word that's written, but they'll look at it and say, yeah, they heard what I had to say. I right. had input on that. And then there's a, right. a buy-in or an acceptance of, you know what, it's not just about me, it's about all my colleagues. I'm represented there, but so are they. Yeah, you're bang on, Bill. And you know what, as you were just uh, saying that, uh, if there's uh, one thing that I've learned over the years, uh, that really, you know, enables companies to be successful and have engaged workforces. It, it's really the ability to listen. Yes. It's this ability to listen and to collect feedback, and not just in values and mission, but in virtually everything, and uh, and then reflect back because then you're on course with with 
with where everybody is in the company. And you're really kind of like really looking to, to really establish that, uh, that tone and, and rhythm uh, that really uh, delivers uh, uh, amazing results. It's when you've got everybody lined up on the same page, yeah. that's when magic happens in organization. Well, and, and you know, it really is a, a leadership concept that is becoming more widely recognized. I mean, leaders in, you know, when I was a younger, younger fellow was about, you know, being told what to do. Leaders were, you know, they, they really, they guided Right. As opposed to now, the guiding, I, I like to describe it as, as guardrails on a highway. I mean, you right. want to give people the ability to move and demonstrate their own skills and their own thoughts and, and their great ideas, but we are going in a direction of the organization, and this is the direction we want to go yeah, in. Yeah, and I mean, when you talk about leadership, really, you know, what is a leader? Well, you expect a leader to have a clear sense of direction, correct? That's first and foremost. You gotta have that vision. You gotta have that vision. You gotta be able to align uh, everybody around it. But once you have that, then, then you gotta be confident about that vision. You gotta have that confidence in that tomorrow that uh, no matter what happens, you know, because people see you and you've gotta have that determination. You know, you got the determination, then, then what else? You gotta think of your people. So right. good leaders, uh, good leaders appreciate and value the people around them. And uh, the, the really, really good leaders, uh, they usually hire people that, uh, that are good and, uh, and smarter than uh, typically That's right. than themselves, right? You know, I, I'm with, with you, which is <laughs> I'm, why I'm, I'm not, I never want to be the boss because that way I could think, well, maybe I'm smarter than somebody. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. I mean, if you, if, as a leader, I think the key role you have is less about the what you do relative to the organization is about how you do it. It's how you inspire people. It's how you communicate the vision. Exactly. It's how you motivate people exactly. in the organization as opposed to can I read a spreadsheet and you know and I mean the decision making process if it's if it's singularly yours it's probably not a good decision because you haven't brought in the folks that are oft times smarter than you and certainly more knowledgeable about a specific area. You bang on again. You know, like when we started, uh, when we embarked on this uh, on this journey to uh, to become like a best employer, uh, the way we started was we asked a question. You know, what does it take for us to be a best employer in our company? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, and we went out to all our people, and we basically started getting input and feedback, and that's how we got going. And from there, we we we, we formalized the uh, the listening uh, requirements. We we had surveys. So we survey our workforce on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was really neat, what we did was we, we also decided that we wouldn't be looking at surveys just from an internal standpoint. But we would look to compare how we did, how we were doing against the best of the best. Right. So we benchmarked ourselves against uh, Aon Hewitt, who does one of the, the largest surveys in, uh, in Canada and, uh, and globally as well. And we're going to come others. back in a, in a moment, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about that, but first we're going to take a short break. Great, okay.